In my last video, we saw how to install a NVIDIA RTX A6000, a brand new Ampere high-end workstation GPU that NVIDIA was kind enough to send me. In this video, we're going to look more at how to install it and use it from a software angle. We'll see the Ampere architecture and what that brings, and we'll see how it compares to the previous video card that I had in here, which was a Titan RTX. It improves performance by a considerable amount, even on a modest everyday sort of benchmark, but we'll also look at some of the more high-end benchmarks from NVIDIA. So at the core of the new Ampere line of GPUs is TensorFlow 32, and this gives you some substantial speed increases. What exactly is TensorFlow 32? This is a blog post from NVIDIA that describes it, and I really like their comparison. I encourage you to read through this entire blog post. I've got three of them linked in the description of this video, but they compare them to rulers, measuring sticks, basically. The TensorFlow 32, you can see that it's got an 8-bit exponent and a 10-bit Mantissa. So if you go back to like floating point representation, I know in a computer science program you get tortured with having to take binary numbers and convert them into the decimal value that they would be, but basically there's a sign which is Boolean, positive, negative. These eight bits, that's essentially the exponent, so that's like scientific notation, so it's 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the positive 3, whatever, and then the mentessa is the actual number that you're multiplying by. So you can see that the longer values that have more bits, it's like a, it's like a ruler. It takes up more space, but it's potentially more accurate. And this is a trade-off between accuracy and taking a lot of memory. In precious GPU memory and transfer time, getting these things smaller is very important. I won't go completely into everything related to this new format, and it's mostly an internal feature that your graphics card and CUDA driver and CUDNN all take advantage of for you, largely automatic. This is another blog post. It has some very good benchmarking in it. Now, benchmarks, I will do a very informal benchmark in this video, but nothing on the level of what they did here with it. Now, these are big networks like BERT and uh, ResNet50. I will do a benchmark on a more smaller everyday network. We'll get to that one in a moment. And we'll get to why some of these get very high multiples of what previous performance was. And this last blog post has some information on how to actually take advantage of this if you do have an Ampere GPU, so like a 30 series or a A6000 like I am using for this video. Basically, TF32 is going to be, for NVIDIA to make this successful, they need to make it work pretty much out of the box so that you just put the new GPU in or run your software on the new cloud instance with a A100 something like that, and it's just going to work. However, I will give you just a few pitfalls that I ran into. Where they talk about here, must use PyTorch 1.7 or TensorFlow 2.4. Yeah, that's very important. When I first installed this card on my computer, I had TensorFlow 2.2 installed, and the reason I have 2.2 installed is as of February 2021, that is what Conda, with built-in GPU support, will install. So that's as far as Conda has gone. They're on 2.2. 2.2 also has a sort of a bug, I think, in TensorFlow that causes it to take like 10 minutes for the initial training to start. Once you run it again, it's quite fast. But that initial one, and there, there's GitHub issues talking about that. Install the latest, do 2.4. If you're running PyTorch, this is all very, very easy, and you don't have to deal with 
as much. TensorFlow 2.4, you have to do a non-conda install. So you've basically got to install CUDA 11 and then QDNN. So QDNN, you need the version 8 of that, which is what corresponds to CUDA 11. I'll do an updated video on how to install TensorFlow from scratch on a Windows computer with CUDA with QDNN and all of that there it's it's more painful than it than it should be PyTorch this is just easy so just things to to be aware of now let's see what this actually looks like so I have this running on my computer and I'm going to use a simple benchmark that I use is a common thing that I'll see in postings and people will ask me in comments is I got this brand new second GPU and I put it on and it actually goes slower well that happens on small tasks it's kind of like buying a Lamborghini is not going to make your drive to work any faster however if you take it to the racetrack you'll be glad you have it so let me show you kind of a benchmark that I have used. I've tried it on a number of GPUs, both cloud and non-cloud, and I'll have a link to it as well. So this is a benchmark that I put together just to show you the numbers here. So looking at this for, for dual GPUs, and this is kind of an everyday example. This is not a gigantic training session like a BERT or something. It's using images of cats and dogs and seeing can it tell the difference, but it's big enough and complicated enough that it will benefit from, say, a second GPU. So I looked at it here with a Quadro 8000, took 26 minutes, and here we used a dual, two of those Quadro RTX 8000s, and it, it just about cuts the, the time in half. Not quite, but... So dual GPUs can, can definitely help. What's interesting is looking at my previous card that I had in this computer, the Titan RTX versus the A6000. Now this is not a 10 times speed up, and we'll get to why that is in a moment, but just out of the box, it is improving it. This is, with, this is easy. This is without me even trying to do anything specific to make the, the new graphics card go faster than the old one. So that's just the sanity check of, yeah, I've got everything installed, I've got everything running, and it's, it's performing reasonably well. So if I insert a code cell, and just to show, so I am running 241 of TensorFlow. As of February 2021, you can't do that nice, easy conda install to get this. You'll have 2.2 if you do that. But then, like the, the documentation says, for maximum performance with an Ampere card, you do want to be running 2.4. The key thing is, no code changes. It just, out of the box, will go fast, but you've got to have the right stuff installed for that. So if I run this, it just shows me, there's my card, 43 gig of RAM. We'll run the cats versus dogs. And I'll also show you, too, why this doesn't necessarily get a tenfold performance increase. It's more what I'm running this on. So let me go ahead and run this. It's going to start actually training. There's always startup time that you will see here. And this is what TensorFlow 2.2 had some issues with. There's always going to be some time between when it says that first epoch to when you actually start to see the steps going across. But the early, the, the 2.2, 2, 2 2.1, somewhere around there, TensorFlow fixed it. There was, there was a bug on GET that was causing like 10 minute startup times, which, which was not fun for these new graphics cards. We'll fast forward through this. This is, this is under a minute. It's not too bad with everything installed correctly. Okay, and there it's going. The steps are ticking through really pretty quickly. If I were to shift this to CPU, even though I've got a pretty good CPU in this computer, you would really see the difference. It would be very slow. So I'm going to bring up a command prompt here, and we're going to... We'll also look at Windows Task Manager. It does show you some indication of GPU performance 
See, GPU zero is, it's getting hit, definitely. It's at 72 centigrade, which is not, not bad. If I go to NVIDIA SMI, you can also see, and gotta love Windows. I mean, everything is running here. I'm not even running Skype. I don't know when Microsoft installed that. If you run this on, on Linux, that's just a few lines. So this is all the processes running on your GPU. And Windows doesn't always give me a good measurement of GPU memory. You can get a better idea of that on, on Linux. But what's important is up here. I think NVIDIA SMI gives me a better representation of this, that the, the GPU is only about at 46% and 76 centigrade. This is running a very short step size. So these steps are just cruising through here very rapidly, many batches, essentially. This is a little more difficult for the TF32 to really shine through. TF32 really optimizes things like dot products, matrix multiplication, which are the core of what's going on with the neural networks. This, with the smaller batch sizes, there's a lot of transfer and other things going on that it's less of a pure TF32 situation, so you're not going to get that 10 times performance. But that's the nature of benchmarks. You always get a full range. But this, this is a very, this is a relatively simple neural network that does benefit from parallelization. So I did want to show you that just out of the box without even thinking about it, on lesser, more everyday tasks than something crazy like retraining BERT, it really does shine and it really does give you additional performance compared to the previous generation. Now in future videos, I am going to show you some cases where we can use this 46, 48 gigabytes, depending on how you round it, of RAM that are on this card and show you how this card can really do some some more intense things. I did a video already on it. It's in the description on doing GANs in Windows, and that really gives it a run for its money and shows you approaching that 10 times performance boost from the new Ampere architecture. So I got links to those videos in the description, and definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of thing and want to see new videos as they come out. Now, another thing I'll point out too is this is running on Windows and it runs quite well on Windows. It is a little slower than in Linux compared to some of these, these benchmark times. I benchmarked that in Linux. Windows, this consistently runs around 20, 21 minutes. But it's not as bad as like running in WSL2 or something like that. That will... I haven't benchmarked this one in WSL2 yet, but that adds a considerable amount of, of time onto it. But at least it still runs in Windows, I guess is the idea of WSL2. Thank you for watching this video. I'm gonna continue with this high-end card and do some other things that require the 48 gigabytes of RAM and see how we can see how we can make use of it. If you find this interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.